Hey, good morning, friends. Marco's here with Michael Anthony Fitness. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally doesn't work. And I am sitting in DC traffic that sucks as bad as the Washington Redskins. We've gone all of about 10 miles in about 45 minutes. And it'll probably be another hour before I get to the job site. I think I spend more time actually driving to work than actually working. What do you think? At least on site. Yeah, at least on site. Yeah, that commute at home to the workshop, that, that's not so bad. You know, from the kitchen to the garage, I can handle that one every day. So, it looks like things are getting kind of hairy with d -Law. Apparently, during the combine, the agent and D-Law's, I'm excuse me, D-Law's agent and the Cowboys were talking around $20 million a year compensation. That's, that's reasonable. Uh, it's still a whole lot of money. It is, I mean, it is. But okay. It's... I mean, you've got Von Miller making 19, you know? And then you've got Khalil Mack getting 23 and a half. So that's kind of a big range. Khalil Mack kind of skewed that whole thing. I'm not sure Khalil Mack's worth 23, but, you know, it is what At the market was. Year. So that was the Cowboys' understanding that $20 million a year, somewhere around there, would get it done. But apparently the good faith negotiations have changed and D Law's agent wants twenty three million. Is it worth twenty three? Twenty three, uh, you know, and, and this might be the reason why the Raiders now maybe the Raiders aren't as dumb as we think they are. This may be the reason why the Raiders ended up saying, you know what, Khalil Mack wants way too much money. Let's get the draft picks and draft some young guys to put in there instead of having that 23 million. I mean, 23 million. You're talking about about 12% of your cap space. 12%. Understand you got 53 guys you got to feed out of 188 million. Okay? You divide that out that averages out to about 3.5 million average if you were if everybody was getting the same amount. You pay one guy 23 million who's not a quarterback. All of a sudden, we're back to 2017 where we couldn't afford to pay backup linemen, guys that ended up playing valuable time. And this is where the Cowboys are beginning to kind of throw him under the bus. What do you think? Bye bye. Trade him for draft picks. If he, if he, if he wants too much money, you gotta let him go. He can't, he can't afford it. Yeah, this is what I always say. What would New England do? They'll let him go. New England would say, How many draft picks can we get out of it? Just because you're paying them what you want to be paying Dak Prescott for his contract. Maybe a little bit. Basically, what is, Dak's going to probably be 25 to 27. So you're basically saying 50, per, uh, 50 million dollars would go to D Law and Dak alone. I would say this should trade. D -Law. And then, then you're talking about Amari Cooper is going to be probably another 16. So that gets you up to 66 million, right? Then Tyron Smith is 15, 66. That's 70. Uh, that's 81 million. And then you got Zach Martin. Now, is that how much he's making this year? Or that's that what his more, cap hit is. Or is that that's what he's owed? That's what he's making this year on the cap. So that's eighty-one million. And then you got Zach Martin. That's eighty. That's ninety-five million. And then you got Travis Frederick. Um, that's one hundred and five million dollars right there. And that's before you pay Zeke. So if you're talking about now 105 million and you're only talking oh well we put Lyle Collins another 10 million that's 115 million 
and then you got zinc you gotta pay in there. Yeah, this is gonna get bad. Uh, unfortunately, the Cowboys can't afford that. I mean, you got sad power 20. That's what they were going to offer in this room. Yeah, I don't see, I, I see the Cowboys saying, you know what, you can pound sand and franchise tag is the best you're going to get. Yeah, they, they were off for 20 years, so they take it in. And the Cowboys may be, right now with the owners meeting and stuff, they may be shopping them around. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure a team would be happy to pay him at 20, 23. Yeah, that's won't be us. That, that, that's not good. He, 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 can go, he, can go up, he can go up the street to the Redskins and get paid. They're willing to give us some picks. Well, well they'll pay here's him. the thing. If you can get a first-round pick, especially if it's like from the middle up for d there's a lot of great pass rushers in this draft. But it probably would be a team that would trade for D-Law as a team that figures we need to you know, we're on the cusp of making a Super Bowl, and that's the guy that will take us over the top. So more than likely, it will be somebody like, say, like an Eagles or something like that. I don't know, man. That 23. Might be time to do I mean, you can structure it so that way you don't take a big hit the first year. You know, you can go ahead and pay him 23 in the first year, make it so because of the guaranteed money, you put more guaranteed money in there. And make it so it's like a ten, twelve million dollar hit this year. But at some point, here's the thing that you have to look at, and I, I talked about this before. The Cowboys have been burned on a lot of big contracts, and, uh, you know, from Jay Ratcliffe, Miles Austin, um, even well, Demarcus Ware is about the only one that you really got value out of. Where he actually played better after he got his big contract because he did have that nineteen and a half sack season. But we didn't win anything. We were eight and eight and eight and eight and eight and eight with you know paying him a whole bunch. Um, Marion Barber. So you like to keep these guys as a cowboy, but the reality is you can't. And that's where the Cowboys are gonna have a hard decision on whether or not to hold on to them. But if those demands are solid at twenty three Kind of like I, I wanted that guy that's over in Baltimore, but, you know, cost is the bottom line. And at $23 million, you could go ahead and get a couple of uh, used pass rushers and still have change along with the draft picks. Um, I like D-Law, but that's too much. Ah, uh, boy. That is too much. Well, here's the thing. Let's, let's look at it from the other other aspect of it. Part of this is the Dallas Cowboys fault. If you're going to trade him, the time to trade him is at the peak. You know the old saying, when you invest in something, buy low, sell high? Right now, his value is at the peak after having two really good seasons. He was a second-round draft pick. You get a first, a third, say a fifth for him, you had a hell of an investment and a, a hell of a return on your investment. And then you turn around and you try to turn it into something. What if? What if? It would be hard to do it would take you more than just that first round pick. But if you could trade up and get Nick Bosa. You know he's going to be he's top five. Yeah, he's top five. So I, he, I understand that. But if you're getting a first. There's, there's no way. If you get a first for D-Law and you take another one of your other, you know, a, a couple of your picks. No, it'll take a couple of picks. It'll probably take more than a couple. It'll take more than a couple. Yeah. It depends on how high that pick would be that you trade. He, he might go number one. It's going to take more than just a couple of picks. If, if, you go to, if the car doesn't really want it, it will take a lot from them. Well, the thing would be is if you don't 
pay him is replacing him. And here's the thing. Here, here's how you have to look at it. Is I can pay basically a hundred plus million dollars invest that on him over the next five years. Right? Or do I take a draft pick, get that guy for the next four years, which will be dirt cheap, and end up saving that money, and now I got that money that I can use on other players. And I hate to say it, but I think at that kind of price range, you do that. You have to look at it from that standpoint. Um, I'm going to think about that today. That, hmm. That might be. And they ain't shall put out either about the shoulder. That, that, that's the thing that bothers me. It's about the shoulder. Well, it's not that he didn't get the surgery. that he mentioned something about it. Well, I mean, that's like, put, I mean, it's like putting a gun to, to their head. And the problem is it's a three to four month recovery. So you're talking about now, let's say he gets it next week, right? So you're talking about April, May, June minimum he won't be ready and possibly July you know training camp starts in July so now you're talking about coming back from a shoulder injury and you know what we found out with players that don't get the off season work and if they get injured it's like that one right or Earl Thomas because you think about Earl Thomas holding out you know he ended up getting hurt so that's yeah. I don't know on that one, guys. This is, this is going to get up. It's, it's no decision. The Dallas Cowboys just want to let him walk. Or see, or see if they can get something for him. 23 is too much. For a yeah. Guy who's not a quarterback. Yeah. But if you want to pay Dad Prescott 23, I'm okay with that. But I mean, not deep low. Here, here's where you look at, like, for example, let's, let's look at Denver. Denver's, you know, been paying Von Miller for all these years, but they don't have, well, they don't have a quarterback, but they don't have players that are winning anymore. And quite frankly, his talent is being wasted. He's getting older and older and older, and they don't have a team around him. Yeah, they have um, nothing since they won that last year. The Bears, of course, with Khalil Mack played well last year, but part of that was they had a soft schedule because they were in the basement the year before. So the question will be is, will they play as well this year? I don't know, guys. It's, it's going to get interesting. Well, um, I'm going to be leaving this afternoon to go uh, have a couple days off with some friends and things. But we'll be still reporting the Joe Blue Sports Report. I may have a little issue on the autograph signing show. It may be that I get Michael Anthony and... Uh, the other guys to take care of the back shirt and things, but one way or the other, we'll get it squared away. But as always, I want to thank everybody for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. We'll probably do a live stream over on the job site while we're getting the kitchen together. I'll see you guys.